What's up, everyone? Welcome to week four. Uh, uh, last week we started unit two. This week we're really getting into unit two. I want to talk about uh, paper two and the things you're going to be doing for it. So get ready. Get ready. Here we go. Okay, so week four. The things that we are doing this week, uh, you'll be um, figuring out which poems you're gonna write you, that you want to read and write about for your essay, um, and you'll go through the process of annotating those. Okay, so um, after this lecture, after everything I go over in this lecture, there'll be another lecture for you to watch that I recorded actually last year. Uh, but I snipped it, so it just it, it begins with me just sort of going over, uh, pick, picking three poems from the packet that I'm going to annotate, and I annotate it on the screen for you, um, and I go through it, and I fill out the outline, uh, number two, um, and I demonstrate to you how to fill that out, all right? So uh, I really highly advise you to watch that lecture, okay? In that lecture... Uh, these are the notes that I end up um, creating in the lecture. And then for an essay two outline, which is due this week, um, I go over, I, this, is, this example is uh, the, the version that I do in the lecture, okay? And this template is the one for you to turn yours in on, okay? Um, so make sure you watch the next lecture as well, not just this one. I want to emphasize that. And I'm saying that now because in case any of you might be watching some of this and then you turn this off prematurely. You turn it off before I get to the ending where I would, I would uh, have not maybe stated that. Okay, so I want to emphasize that. Make sure we, you watch the second lecture that's also going to be posted. Okay, and these poem annotations. And the essay two outline are, are going to go along with the second lecture. Okay, for this lecture that I'm, I'm discussing today, um, this is these are the notes that I'll be going over. Okay, and then this is the essay two description which I'm going to go over. I have it in my PowerPoint, but here it is separately. If you should want a quick reference to it, all right. Uh, cool. So let's do that. Let's do that. Um, this lecture often comes around uh, week nine or ten into uh, the semester. And so uh, week nine or ten in the fall semester is uh, usually around October. So this is my October PowerPoint. And I saw no reason to change it uh for summer because it would it's, it's not an easy change so i just kept it okay so there you go here's some pumpkins and falling leaves in june yeah all right week four 1102 using research to support analysis of poetry here we go okay um i don't think we need to see my face i want to hide that okay Essay two, poetry, literary analysis. You are going to write an analysis about three of the poems from the female, queer, and black perspectives in poetry packet. Analyze and discuss the overall themes of the poems. Consider the different literary elements at work in the poems. How does the poet use maybe meter, rhythm, rhyme, form, imagery, symbolism, to convey the overall themes and shapes our understanding of the poems? What evidence in the poems do you see for this a position. You're analyzing the poems and you're discussing what the author is doing in those poems. What theme are they trying to communicate? And maybe like what like tool did they use? Did they use an image? Did they use a symbol? Okay. Your thesis statement should present an arguable point about how the poets use literary elements to convey the poem's overall theme. The body paragraphs should focus on analyzing specific lines or language from the poems with integrated quotations or paraphrases included as evidence to prove or demonstrate the point you make in your thesis. In the final paragraph, you should bring the essay to a logical end by summarizing your main point and making a statement about your discussion's significance. Yeah, okay. Assume your audience has read the, have read the poems, because I have, all right? You don't need to provide too much explanation, only that which matters to your 
uh, point that you're trying to make. Minimum, minimum requirements, 1,200 to 1,300 words, okay? Um, if you analyze three poems and you just can't reach that, then analyze the fourth one, okay? We're trying to push for longer essays because uh, as you're moving up into your 2,000 level classes, and then if you plan on transferring and you go into 3,000, 4,000 level classes, they expect that as you get higher up in your education, uh, more words you'll be including in your essays, okay? And Gwinnett Tech is a transferable school. Uh, a lot of students will end up transferring to Gwinnett College or UGA or Kennesaw State or Georgia State. And so with that, we are putting on expectations for you that um, are the same as, as these higher institutions. So as uh, we get through this, as you progress through this course, each essay will require you to have written more, okay? So 1200 is the minimum, uh, three to four, which will be about three to four pages in length and formatted according to MLA guidelines. Uh, there needs to be a title. You need to have an introduction, which includes the poet's name or the poet's names and their titles and the thesis statement. Uh, you got to integrate quotes in our paraphrases from the three poems and have three secondary sources within text citations. Each poem should have a different secondary source in which you are applying to your understanding of the poem. Okay. Make sure you write in third person point of view and always in literary present. What's happening in the poem is happening in that moment because I can open, I can turn to that poem and start reading it right then and there, okay? So make sure that it is always literary present in third person. All right, so I'm gonna focus this on using research in your um, poems, okay? Um, which is gonna be re-emphasized again in the second lecture that you watch. All right, so there's supportive research. Research that directly supports your analysis because the author shares your perspective. There, uh, so for example, uh, your topic is about how the main character in the yellow wallpaper becomes insane because of the setting. Now look, y'all, this is slightly a review. I, I did go over this before, but I just want to re-emphasize this, okay? about um, your research, okay? Um, so you find a quote by an author who is talking about the actual piece of, uh, the actual essay, I mean, I'm sorry, the actual poem that you are reading, okay? which is fine, you can do that. Then there's also supportive research, research that directly supports your analysis. I just said, that. I just said all this, this is repeat, okay? Then there's topical research, research that indirectly supports your analysis by applying the research to your topic. Some of these poems will be easier to find topical research because they might not be very well known. So there might not be anybody else who has already spoken about them. You know, like classic writers, supportive research is easier for like older literature, poems and poets uh, that are not modern, that have been around for 60 to 100 years. Um, there, there's a lot more work about them, okay? Um, but, but some of these poets I put on your sheet are really new. Uh, in fact, one of the poets, she's a Instagram poet. She uh, was posting on Instagram for, for, I think, many years before she got published, okay? So there's, probably not a lot, lot, there's probably not a lot of supportive research about her. So you'd have to find topical research. Uh, research that indirectly supports your analysis by applying the research to your topic, okay? So if your topic is about how the main character in the, in the yellow wallpaper becomes insane because of the setting, you could find a piece of research that's on a psychological analysis about what happens to people when they are isolated and then relate what that quote says, what that source says to the main character in your um, source, I mean, in, in your poem. So, you know, uh, you do not have to find research that's specifically about your poems, okay? You need to find research that supports your interpretation of, of the uh, poem. So, like, there's a couple of different poems about racism. You don't need to find research on that actual poem if you 
because if you, if you find research about the impacts and effects of racism on individuals, well, then you can apply that research to the speaker of your poem. Um, so listen, you need to use one outside resource per body paragraph in your essay, okay? As before, you can use um, Galileo Biblical Guides if you want, okay? Um, you go on the literary research database, type in your, your poem, okay? And see if you get anything, okay? Which is fine. You might get a, a piece of research on theme that deals with the theme of your poem. Lucky you, okay? And then you just pull out the uh, work, the, the, the citation, put it on your outline, so make sure you have it, okay? And you are good to go once you find that quote that you want to use, okay? Now, when inserting a poetry quote into your paragraphs, you need to do the following, okay? So for your outline, the same as before, I'm gonna have you like, I want you to go ahead and pull out your, your quotes from your primary source and put it on your outline, okay? Um, now what you need to do is, before that, you need to number each line of the poems. Um, every, uh, when you quote a line of poetry, you are, you have to cite the number, the line numbers, okay? So like, um, let's see, where's our, okay. So like right here, see, like this, this I don't think this was actually numbered on your packet. Uh, I, I did it myself. Let's see, let me get this guy. And the way I did it was, it was like this, okay? So then I highlight, poem itself not 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 the title just the poem i go up here to the one two three numbering and ugh, didn't do it right just as soon as you gotta fix it restart numbering there you go one two three so, like these are numbered okay so if i'm citing if i'm quoting this these two lines i'd i'd put seven and eight if i was just quoting this one line right here oops it's one line that's line 10 Okay, you got to number your lines. And then integrate the quotes seamlessly into your sentence, or at least use a signal phrase. Use a forward slash to indicate where lines of the poem have been combined. In the parentheses, write the number of lines where the quote comes from. Okay, so like this is the giving tree. There's a lot of construction. I might need to go inside. I want to pause this for a moment. Okay, sorry. I moved inside. They're doing construction like everywhere. And I like recording outside because my my house is freezing in the mornings. And uh, we, we, we blast the AC at night. We keep it low during the day. And so when I'm recording these, it's like always oh, cold. I'm in my basement right now and it's like 60 degrees. Okay. All right. So this is the giving tree. And see like each line, I, I numbered five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This, this will is actually over here, but because of the PowerPoint, it pushed it over here. But there's actually one line, okay? Then when I'm like writing my analysis over here, okay, I say the tree in the poem represents the selflessness and empathy women show to their loved ones. When, they, when the boy exclaims that, I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. I have this this forward slash because I have, this is a, I'm making this into like one full line, okay. And so this demonstrates that in the original poem, there's a separation. There's a separation in this line and this line, okay. And so here I have five to six. And so if I'm you know me being the the, the instructor and I'm reading your your essay and you have five to six here, that's just two lines, which means then I should have, I should see two lines here. One line, and then this right here tells me a space, okay? Uh, the tree wanting to help him uh, self-destructively tells him, I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples and sell them in the city. Okay, seven to nine. So that's the first three pages. When I see three pages, I know that there should be at least two dashes. One, two, 
okay? When I'm grading essay two, I will be grading that you have dashes and that you have the, um, the, the line numbers. There are a lot of times where people will write line numbers like eight through 12, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's five lines, which means there should be four dashes there, okay? But then when I read the quote, there are no dashes, or there's like two dashes, which means that three are missing, okay? So you will lose points if when you are citing, when you are quoting your poems, if they are not um, cited correctly, all right, or formatted correctly where they don't have the these dashes here to, to represent line breaks, then you will lose points, okay? You got to do that. It's absolutely 100 imperatively important, okay? Okay. You want to research topics that deal with your poetry packet, okay? So like, for example, some of the poems deal with, like, female friendship and abusive relationships, uh, depression and homosexuality in children, coming out in adolescence, racial inequalities, perpetuating black stereotypes. These are things that you can research uh, and then they're topical and then you apply them to your interpretation of the poems, okay? Again, you don't have to find research that, are, that that's specifically about these poems. Instead, you can research the topics, find interesting articles, then relate though what, what those writers have said to the poems to help us better interpret the poetry okay when analyzing literature find research that supports your interpretation rather than finding research about someone else's interpretation to me that's that's that, that's that, that's a higher level of thinking when you can come up with your own interpretation and then you find some research to support your interpretation it's easy just to go and Search up the 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 uh, an analysis of someone else's poem, okay? But I don't want that. And like you are not being graded on whether or not your interpretation is correct. You are being graded on how well you communicate, okay? So like, um, I don't care about what is the correct interpretation. I'm looking for an original interpretation. What is your interpretation? Why do you think that way? And then how did you know? What can you use to support that? Okay, because your interpretation might be more insightful than, than some, you know, published writer's interpretation. Okay, so try to create your own. Don't try to look for somebody else's views. Okay, all right, so here, here's an example. Okay, if I was writing a paper about the giving tree, okay, uh, and I interpret the poem as being uh, demeaning and misogynistic and, uh, Banning on women, okay, well then I might find a article that talks about essentially the self-sacrifice the um, of, women, of women, okay? Maybe I come across this article called In a Society That Fetishizes Female Self-Sacrifice Saying No, Save Me. So I found this quote in this article that says, women so often say yes to favors, requests, and unrealistic parenting expectations because we fear being accused of being rude, mean, or selfish. Working mothers have shouldered the majority of the burden around the home. Women need to draw boundaries around what we can and cannot take on in our own domestic partnership. Okay? So I read that, which to me I think is very much what the giving tree is about, this tree who just gives everything away uh, out of love, but does not receive that type of love um, in return. So then pull all this together to write a paragraph, okay? This is an example of the kind of paragraph that I'm looking for in your essay, okay? In the giving tree is the poem that I am writing about. The tree represents the self-sacrificing nature of women and how society, as in the boy, advantage of the female sex, expecting her to give her entirety to serve the common good. In her article, In a Society That Fetishizes Female Self-Sacrifice Saying No Save Me, Grace Kinning discusses the burden at home that women faced during the pandemic and how one word saved the author. No. 
He writes that we so often say yes to favors, requests, and unrealistic parenting expectations because we fear being accused of being rude, mean, or selfish. That's my secondary source. Quote, now, in the giving tree, the tree doesn't say no, and because of that, she loses everything she has. When the boy demands money, she willingly offers herself up by saying, quote, I'm sorry, but I, slash, have no money, slash, I have only leaves and apples, slash, get my apples, boy. Silver scene, 29 to 32, okay? 29, 30, 31, 32, okay? If the tree had said no to the boy, he wouldn't have lost everything in the end. Women are the trees. They give everything, saying yes, even if it will hurt them. As the author argues, women should learn how to say no because we can at least draw boundaries around what we can and cannot take on. This poem serves as an allegory to teach young girls how not to be used by the people in their lives. So I have a claim it's up here in the giving tree, blah, 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 down to here. I have support. And then I have analysis, okay? I have quotes from both of my art, from my secondary source and my primary source, all right? And then I have analysis and explanation, okay? This is the type of analysis I'm looking for in your essay. Respectable sources outside of Galileo, the New York Times, Vulture, The Atlantic, Slate, The Guardian, which that article is from, The Economist, The Washington Times, Psychology Today, New York Magazine, these are all good go-to sources. Just a recap of constructing your paragraphs, okay? Um, for the introduction, you want to start off broad and then move to a more narrow and specific idea. Um, you know what? Actually, I'll go over this next week, really, because this week you're not really writing. You're really focusing on just the um, outline. Okay, so I might just go over all this part next week. Uh, let's see, what do we have on the docket for next week? I don't want to waste your time. You're not writing paragraphs. This, 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 uh, this week, anyways. So, where is our list? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we should. Um, Review, paragraph, writing, from week four, PowerPoint. Okay. All right, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say that for next week when you're actually writing essay two. I don't want to waste your time. Okay. This week you're focusing on research. Research and writing your analysis. I'm sorry, writing your outline. So I'm gonna go over all that next week. This week you are writing and submitting an outline for essay two. Next week, okay, I will be reviewing some positives from essay one. I'm gonna change this title. Week four, five, <laughs> PowerPoint, okay, good. So what you need to do now is make sure you watch my next lecture where I, I will pick Essentially, I take three poems from this packet and I annotate them all live on screen and I end up doing this. <laughs> okay. What? Okay, this will make all sense in the next lecture because you, you, you will see me go over all this, okay? And then in the next lecture, I will be going over the outline uh, for essay two, this outline right here. Posted. I'll go over this, and I, I I enter in all this stuff in the outline in in the um lecture. Okay, so that will make more sense also. So make sure you watch. Uh, I might be posting lecture one before I post lecture two because lecture two is still uh uh being um processed in YouTube. So I don't know how long that's going to take. Okay. All right. Um, in the week four folder. This is the Dropbox for the outline two, okay? And uh, here, here is the an example, and here's the template that you can write it on, okay? All right, if you have any questions, you know what to do.
let me know. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.